Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa, and in this video, we're going to take a very detailed look at Hammond and the way he fits into the meta, and just how powerful this hero is, and how you properly use the hero. So, first of all, I broke his ball. On the PTR, <laughs> it just sort of was moving slow. So, this is what I want to talk about here. This is Hammond, and this is how Hammond enters points. It is ridiculous. In fact, it's completely unstoppable. So, this here, obviously, it's Icon Ball, first point attack. How would you prevent this pile driving the point, right? If the enemy is anywhere around here, you can instantly pile drive them and then the rest of your team dive in. Hamster, hamster? <laughs> That's what he is, right? Hammond is the ultimate, and I mean absolutely ultimate, dive tank. But he's not a main tank, and we'll get onto that into a second. So check this out. This is King's Row. So I want to show you here some ways of entering the point. Good ways and bad ways. Now, Generally, staying on the floor like this is a bad way to enter the point because this means you can't pile drive. What's happening here is you are gaining the uh, maximum speed. You're going straight into the point, which, you know, is good. You're going straight to the back. You'll knock people out of the way. You'll do damage to them. When you get there, yes, you could pop shields. Yes, you could start doing damage and maybe you could try and hit them with a wrecking ball and whatever. The problem is you're missing out on Pile Driver, and Pile Driver is the best ability Hammond has got because as soon as he's in the air, and because you can only use this in the air, and he Pile Drives down onto the enemy, he stuns them all, knocks them all into the air. They literally cannot do anything. So I would avoid doing this kind of thing. Instead, always look high. It's dead simple to use Hammond. All you do is deploy the grappling hook above Hammond, and then just keep going forward. And you'll automatically swing up in the air. You disconnect the hook when you get to the, the apex of the swing, let's say. And then you pile drive down onto the point. And it, that is like maximum hammer. Like, watch this. Straight in. Pile drive straight down. Now, that is going to be absolutely mega powerful on King's Row. This hero, I honestly think is going to be super strong on certain maps. On other maps, I think it's going to be quite hard to get use out of Hammond. Because if, this is where I broke the ball. <laughs> so, uh, with Hammond, if like... The enemy team are condensed into one point. It's going to be very easy to just get in there and smash them. This again is Icon Bowl. Look at that. You can just roll in, grab the high ground. Always think about connecting to things above Hammond so you can get that very easy elevation and you can jump forward. Okay, let's go to Numbani, another classic dive map. Well, watch this. You can get into the back. I miss here on the first attempt, but I wanted to leave this in the video just to show you guys, you know, this isn't super easy. It's not like you can just do this and that's Hammond. This is the thing with the hero. It's got quite a high skill cap. You almost have to, you have to become very good at knowing what you can connect to, how far Hammond can go, when to disconnect Hammond. So there's a lot of this sort of nuances to the hero that you can learn. I mean, it's just crazy. Like, you can dive all over this point. I'm going to say right now that I think this point here is going to be Hammond's absolute play playground, especially on attack, on defense. I don't know. But on attack, you just can't stop him. He can just get straight in there. Of course, he'll die if he goes in on his own. He's going to need support. Um, but we'll get onto that in a second in the video. I just want to show you guys how mobile he is. I mean, look at that. You're just swinging off everything. You're prioritizing getting the high ground grapple. So always grapple above you. So watch as we go through this now. We go forward. I look for the high ground. Get the grapple. I'm above the point. Pile drive into the point. Then if there were players on the point, I'd obviously pop shield straight away. Because you get 100 shields currently at the moment. They may change that on the PTR. But you get 100 shields per enemy in the radius. And you can tell how many enemies are by you if you see the, uh, the little icon next to Hammond's health. Uh, that'll obviously it's zero because there's nobody on the map at the moment. But that would potentially go up to six, uh, which would be really powerful. So you just go in. It's crazy. Uh, that's Hammond's ultimate there. So what I want to do now is talk about the ultimate because this has got some, um, again, it's got a little sort of skill thing. Uh, I guess a kind of skill component to it. It's not just a case of pressing Q and you drop your ultimate. So what I want to show you guys here is the spread. Now, if I'm still on the ground and I use the ultimate, you get a very tight spread of mines. Now, this is good and bad in some situations. So if you're on a very small point, this could be really strong, right? So if you're on like, I don't know, Nepal Shrine, for example, this might be really good because it's going to cover the whole point. However, if you're on Numbani, um, that's not going to cut it. Now, you might have caught in the previous clip where I was in the air when I deployed the mines. This is because the higher you are, the more sort of spread you get on the mine. So watch this. If I go into the air, deploy the mines mid-air, look at the size of the spread now. It's much bigger. That gives you a lot more area control. Obviously, it's not as densely packed, so you kind of have to weigh up what you're going to do. Are you going to drop the mines dense? Are you going to drop them mid-air? Another thing with the mines as well is... If you drop the mines midair and then pile drive into the enemy team, you're going to stun them in the minefield. That could be a good little kind of combo. 
So I want to talk about Hammond then. How does this hero fit into the game? Um, this isn't a main tank. This is not Reinhardt. This is not Winston. This is not Orisa. What I mean is it does not absorb damage, right? You cannot use it as a, a solo tank in a game because everybody else in your team will literally die. What this thing is, is a solid cannonball. Think of it like a cannonball or a bowling ball. You throw it at the enemy, it disrupts them, and while it's disrupting them, everybody else then dives in and kills the enemy. So this means we are going to see an absolute, and I mean an absolute shed load of Winston, uh, Hammond and Diva. That is going to be a phenomenally strong attack, right? They're all tanks, but it doesn't matter because when you dive in with uh, Hammond, he's just going to stun everybody. So they can just pile on. It's going to be ridiculous. Obviously, you could throw Genji into that, uh, you know, and, and other stuff. Like, so what we're looking at here is <laughs> it's a bit of a weird situation in my head because Blizzard for a while have had some issues with dive. Um, they made changes to counter dive. Look at Brigitte. Brigitte counters dive. There's, there's no two ways about that. But can Brigitte counter Hammond falling out of the sky and pile driving her? I don't think she can. She's going to have to be very quick with the stun to be able to catch that. So Hammond is just this complete ridiculous, like, you just throw him into the enemy. As I touched on a little bit earlier, though, you need to really avoid using him as just a primary tank on his own. Uh, he can't do that. He is not a main tank. The rest of your team will get battered. They will get destroyed. And this is simply because of the way he's designed. He is this disruptive tank that is very survivable on his own. So he loses the ability to protect his team, but gains the ability to protect himself. So the Hammond player in theory, should almost never die if they're played well. If they execute the dive correctly, if they jump onto the right targets, if they use the high ground grapple, pile drive in, pop their shields, start doing damage, their grapple will be back up again. And they can, like in theory, well, there's no theory about this, they could grapple back out of the fight. That is going to be really strong. This means you've got this tank that can barrel roll in, barrel roll out, barrel roll in, barrel roll out. And all you need to do to be effective with this in, like, in the team is you just need to say, guys, just wait for me. I'm going to hit back right if you're going on Numbani or I'm going to dive the point. As soon as you go in, you just, everybody follows in and it's just going to be a massive, absolute cluster. That's what this hero is. I think he's going to shake up the meta. I, I, and, and I know, you know, a lot of people say this when new heroes come out. Oh yeah, the meta's going to get shaken up, this, this and that. Look at Brigitte. She's had an impact on the game. And yes, she can be seen as frustrating to play, uh, play against because, you know, nobody really likes stuns that much. But is she going to have as much impact as Hammond? I don't think she is, because Hammond is just on another level. This is a hero which has got quite a few boxes ticked. The first box is it's fun to play. It's very, very unique. Brigitte, uh, she's not really that unique. She's kind of a bit boring to play. He's also got a very, um, I don't want to say a high skill ceiling, but he's got a, a lot of tricks that you have to learn. So as a player... Like, even when I was recording bits for this video, you know, I'm messing around in custom games. I don't do that on any other hero because there's no need, really. I mean, yeah, okay, there is. You could maybe look at grapple spots for Widowmaker, you know, and stuff like that. But it, he is the first hero that I've really connected with and thought, actually, okay, I'm just going to load up custom games. I'm going to practice my movement because it's such a uh, an integral part to the hero. And what that means is you're going to be able to see people who put time in on Hammond will be better than people that don't. If you compare this to Reinhardt, now I know Hammond isn't a Reinhardt uh, replacement, but just compare him for a second. A Reinhardt player that uses the shield and just walks forward is fairly effective. A really good Reinhardt player, yeah, you can tell the difference. They'll, you know, better fire strikes, better earth shatters, better charges. But still, that player holding the shield and walking forward ha still has an effect. You compare that to Hammond, and if you've got a player that just cannot use the grappling hook, he cannot do anything, and he will die. He will literally feed. Yet, if you've got a player that's really, really, really damn good with the, cannon, uh, with the cannonball, with the grappling hook, you're going to be able to tell. And to me, that is the mark of a very, very well-designed hero. In terms of balance, we don't know. We're going to have to get this into competitive. It's the same, you know, with all the heroes. It's the same with Brigitte. Whenever a new hero comes out, we need to get them into competitive to find out how they actually play. Because at the moment, a lot of this is kind of conjecture, but it's also based off playing in custom games. It's based off playing on the PTR. Uh, it's based off the current state of the hero right now, which do remember, these heroes can change. Blizzard may change the way they work. So Hammond had some issues. Um, he wasn't generating ultimate charge of pile driver. He does now. Uh, he didn't before. So there's little things like that they'll change. Maybe they'll reduce the amount of shields he gets from pile driver, which is one potential option. Because remember, he can literally get over a thousand combined armor, hit points, and um, shields on his own. 
That is ridiculous. That he is nigh on unkillable. Like when Hammond comes in, I mean, if you guys have played on PTR, you'll know this, but when he dives into your team and you start attacking him, it's almost pointless unless literally everybody kills him because he's just not, he's not going to die. Like, and if the supporters come in and start healing him, Anna might actually come back into the game, which is the final point I want to end this video on um, because Anna's got long range healing potential. Now, Hammond is actually a really big target, so it's easy to hit with Anna. So she may come back. The thing with Anna, she suffers from a lot of other issues as well. And of course, we've got Mercy and we've got Zen, who, you know, Zen can just throw the orb on Hammond and Hammond's just going to be a, a beast anyway. And Mercy, well, she's just Mercy. She can bring him back if he's dead and, you know, all of that good stuff. So it is a very interesting time. I think we are going to see a lot more use of Hammond compared to other heroes that have um, hit the game, especially when they first come out. Because Hammond is fun to play, so people will play him. He is very strong on certain maps. I don't think you can use him all of the time, but I think he's going to be really, really strong if he's paired with Winston. That's going to be one hell of a tank combo. Like, I don't know how you stop that. Like, you you, you physically cannot stop them getting on your team. So the only way is sort of to spread out, and that's going to be difficult, especially because a lot of um, uh, Overwatch is based around fighting on a point. You know, whether that's fighting on a payload, whether that's fighting on the control point. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this all develops. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. If you've played on the PTR, go crazy. Let me know. Do you like Hammond? Do you think he's bad? Do you think he's good? Do you think he's OP? You can follow me on Twitter as well, guys, which is at Unit Lost Gaming, and I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. Toodaloo.